Well, President Biden speaking to the American people last night, defending his decision to end the country's longest war. This decision about Afghanistan is not just about Afghanistan. It's about ending an era of major military operations to remake other countries, nation building, trying to create a democratic, cohesive and united Afghanistan, something that has never been done over many centuries of Afghan's history. Joining us live this morning to share his reaction to that is U.S. Congressman Michael Waltz. He's a former Green Beret who also served in Afghanistan. Thank you for joining us, Congressman. How are you? Uh, very frustrated, frankly, and any any given moment, somewhere between rage and, and grief at how this has unfolded. Talk to me about what was going through your mind as you watched the president's speech yesterday. Congressman, are you able to hear me? I am. Uh, I am. Apologies. Must have a bad connection. That's okay. It, what did you think as you were watching the president's speech yesterday? Well, I thought there were a, a number of broken promises in there, promises uh, to, uh, to the American people that he just made as recently as a few weeks ago that he wouldn't leave them behind. My office and Democrat offices, so many others have been heavily engaged with veterans groups night after night, desperately trying to get them out to try to get the Americans, our allies and others out, despite the fact that I've been begging, along with Democrats as well, uh, the administration to start the evacuation months ago. But I think in the bigger picture, uh, you know, this war is not over. Uh, it, the intelligence is clear that Al Qaeda, ISIS uh, and other terrorist groups in the region fully intend to hit the United States again in the wake of a Taliban takeover. Uh, that cancer is going to spread. Uh, they now have uh, an army's worth of American equipment uh, to work with to do so. And what has me so frustrated uh, is, is that future American soldiers, uh, when that threat to the homeland grows, are going to have to go back to deal with it. Uh, but yet, <laughs> now we have no bases in the region. They've all been given away. Uh, we have no local allies. They're being hunted down. Uh, and again, they're going to have to fight through an army's worth of uh, billions of dollars of American equipment uh, that are now in the hands of, of Taliban and Al Qaeda. So I, you know, this is a disaster of historic proportions. It's a disaster from a humanitarian standpoint. Uh, it's a disaster for our credibility around the world. I just had a, an ambassador from the Middle East uh, tell me that the message uh, across the Middle East now is that jihad is won, democracy is lost, and their recruiting is through the roof. And it's a disaster from a counterterrorism standpoint. Uh, and then, you know, the final, uh, ex you know, one of the, the justifications from, from President Biden is, well, we have to shift to the real threats like Russia and China. Well, Bagram Air Base, the main air base that, that he closed, was the only base in the world sandwiched between China, Russia, and Iran. Uh, Afghanistan also is sitting on a trillion dollars of critical minerals uh, that, that we could have had access to that China now has access to. Uh, and China has already sent messages to Taiwan saying, you better start coming over to our side because America clearly uh, is not going to stand with you and does not back its allies. So, you know, again, I think this is a calamity uh, across the board. It is easy to say, well, I got the troops home and the, and the war is over. Well, you know, he may be done with Afghanistan, but Afghanistan's not done with us. Congressman, from, from your standpoint, what can be done on the congressional level to, to get some of these Americans home? I understand that your office has actually been contacted by people who are still stuck in Afghanistan. Yeah, as recently as yesterday morning, there were literally buses uh, of American citizens and key Afghans that couldn't get out, uh, that, we, that we moved to a safe location. Thank God for these various veterans groups that are stepping into this in the void here and doing the job the State Department should be doing. Uh, and now we're trying to get them out through various means. Uh, but we're having to fight through our own bureaucracy. Uh, we're having to fight through our own government. Uh, to get the clearances and to get them uh, safely. I mean, we, my, my staff, a congressional staff, has been on the phone night after night, guiding them around Taliban checkpoints, connecting them uh, with the military while the airport was still open, 
uh, trying to help in any way we can, ensuring their paperwork was straight. Uh, and yet, you know, I could show you messages from where, you know, the Taliban are shooting at us and telling us they will execute us if we don't turn around. Those types of messages from, uh, from Americans that were trapped, it's heartbreaking and it's infuriating. Yeah, well, we're, let's uh, all praying, of course, that we can get everybody out who wants to get out. Uh, the fight continues. Uh, thank you so much, former Green Beret and U.S. Congressman uh, Michael Waltz. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us this morning. All right.